after the theory that Jar Jar Binks was secretly a Sith mastermind went viral on Reddit and blew up online, I was not expecting to have my mind blown by a fan theory again for a long time. Well, I was wrong as a new fan theory has popped up and it's taking the internet by storm. And that's the theory that Rey may actually be the granddaughter of Emperor Palpatine himself. So put on your tinfoil hats as I'm about to explain every single detail for you. So let's get started. The very first move we see Rey perform with a lightsaber is a forward thrusting stab. If this move looks familiar to you, that's because it's also the very first move we see Emperor Palpatine perform in Revenge of the Sith. This is so important because Rey and Palpatine are the only two Force users in Star Wars to ever use that move, and they both go on to use it multiple times each. I mean, just look at this. They couldn't possibly have modeled Rey's fighting style after Palpatine any more than they did. It's identical. The only way they could have spelled it out more for us is if they actually had Rey shoot lightning out of her fingers. It's literally the only thing they left out to not completely give it away. Rey's pull to the dark side is seen multiple times throughout The Force Awakens. First, there's her anger with Tito. But you really start to see her dark side anger after she kills a stormtrooper and feels the power of a blaster. She also gets pleasure out of revealing Kylo Ren's deepest fears to him. That you will never be as strong as Darth Vader. And of course, there's the hate-fueled rampage she goes on when fighting Kylo Ren. Just look at how sidiously she paces after striking Kylo down. In fact, the official script reveals that Rey is actually tempted by the dark side into killing Kylo Ren. And she could kill him right now with one vicious strike. But she stops realizing she stands on a greater edge than even the cliff, the edge of the dark side. And the official canon Force Awakens novel that was released alongside the movie reveals that a mysterious voice inside her head tells her to kill Kylo Ren. Kill him, a voice inside her head said. It was amorphous, unidentifiable, raw. If this voice was Snoke, they wouldn't have said it was amorphous and unidentifiable as we already know who Snoke is. So the voice was of another evil character, which is very likely to be her grandfather, Emperor Palpatine. So considering that Rey is unbelievably powerful and being pulled so incredibly by the dark side, her lineage must also be very powerful and heavily rooted in the dark side as well. And it doesn't get any more powerful or rooted in the dark side than Palpatine. Do I really need to even say this? First off, everyone and their grandmother is expecting Luke to be Rey's father. They basically spoon feed it to you the entire movie. Don't you think they're trying a little too hard to convince us that Luke's her father? I mean, at this point, it would end up being the most boring and unsurprising reveal ever. It's pretty clear that they're purposefully misleading us, so when they reveal that her grandfather is actually Emperor Pat Palpatine, it surprises everyone. Just a few weeks ago, the canon Star Wars novel Bloodline was released. It confirms that Leia has had constant contact with Luke even when he went to start the new Jedi Academy. So she would have known if Luke had a wife and or daughter and neither are ever mentioned in the novel. And right after the book was released, a user on Twitter tweeted Pablo Hidalgo, the creative executive at Lucasfilm, looking at the Bloodline stuff, is it safe now to say that Rey is not Luke's daughter? And he replied, I think once the book is out there for everyone to read, more people should weigh in on this idea. He isn't allowed to come right out and say it because of legal reasons, but this is as close to official confirmation that Luke is not Rey's father as we could possibly get. 
And when you think about it, there was actually a lot of clues in the movie that point towards Luke not being Rey's father. Like Maz Kanata implying that her family's already dead, Leia and Han Solo not knowing who Rey is, and I'm pretty sure they would know their own niece. J.J. Abrams even confirmed in an interview that Leia has never met Rey. The Jedi Code forbids Jedis from ever falling in love or marrying. Almost all the characters in Episode 8 would end up being Skywalkers. There'd be Kylo Ren who's a Skywalker, Luke Skywalker, Leia who's a Skywalker, and Rey Skywalker. I mean, come on. They need some characters from different families already. And Luke has an American accent while Rey has an English accent. And that isn't a coincidence either, because both Daisy Ridley and John Boyega have English accents. While we were on set, he, he was sick and tired of just being stuck in central London. Yet John Boyega had to change his accent for Finn while they wanted Ray to have an English accent. And if you don't remember, Palpatine also has an English accent. Ray's parents are uh, not in episode seven. So why was Rey left on Jakku in the first place? Well, when Luke was building the new Jedi Academy, he would have scoured the galaxy for Force-sensitive children that he could train as the new generation of Jedi. And when he came across the granddaughter of Palpatine, he surely would want to train her to make sure she stays on the light side of the Force. However, when Luke finds out that Supreme Leader Snoke is trying to lure Ben Solo to the dark side, Luke would have decided that Rey was far too dangerous to be kept around while Snoke is meddling with his students trying to turn them all to the dark side. So he would have taken Rey far, far away where no one, not even Snoke, could find her on a desert planet in the middle of nowhere, like Jakku. And how do you ensure she never leaves? Tell her her family's gonna return one day to pick her up, so you better not leave. Also, Rey has mysteriously seen the island at the end of The Force Awakens. You imagine an ocean? I see it. I see the island. So Luke could have taken her there as a child while still deciding what to do with her. In the Force Awakens novel, when Rey force grabs the lightsaber out of the snow, Kylo Ren says, It is you. Ren murmured. His words unsettled her. Not for the first time. He seemed to know more about her than she did about herself. So Kylo Ren knows of her force abilities and when you go back and watch the movie again, it becomes clear that not only does Kylo and Snow know who Rey is, but they're also very determined to capture and train Rey. The two were accompanied by a girl. <laughs> What girl? Bring her to me. She's just beginning to test her powers. The longer it takes to find her, the more dangerous she becomes. You need a teacher! I can show you the ways of the Force! So Kylo Ren knows who she is because he probably met her when Luke first brought her back to the Jedi Academy while Kylo Ren was still training with Luke. And of course, Snoke, being so wise and strong in the Force, would be able to sense Palpatine's remaining descendant. Palpatine's voice can be heard multiple times in Rey's Force vision. Achieve a power greater than any Jedi. Later in the vision, Kylo Ren actually saves Rey's life. Kylo then walks towards Rey to possibly capture her, but she obviously gets away. And if Kylo Ren knows Rey is a descendant of Palpatine in this scene, it would make sense that he'd save her so he could go on to train her in the dark side. And this definitely happens in the past and not the future as Kylo is still wearing the exact same helmet with the same dents and scratches on it that was destroyed after it was left on Star Killer base. Rey is mysteriously on the dark side of the Force Awakens poster with Kylo Ren. Seems like foreshadowing to me, and she does look pretty evil if I do say so myself. <laughs> 
At its core, Star Wars has always been about a Skywalker versus a Palpatine. Anakin Skywalker versus Palpatine. Then there's Luke Skywalker versus Palpatine. And now, Kylo Ren, who's a Skywalker, versus Rey Palpatine. The fight between Kylo and Rey has a lot more weight to it when you consider that Kylo doesn't even want to kill Rey, seeing as if he can turn her to the dark side and train her, he and her, a Skywalker and a Palpatine, could rule the galaxy together, finishing exactly what Darth Vader started. Not to mention the poetic mirroring of the original trilogy, where the light and dark have switched places. Now a Skywalker represents the dark side and a Palpatine represents the good side, at least for now. Both the script and the novel make it very clear that Luke not only knows who Rey is, but he's also very apprehensive when he sees her. In the script it says he looks at Rey, a kindness in his eyes, but there's something tortured too. He doesn't need to ask her who she is or what she's doing here. His look says it all. And in the novel, it says that his countenance was haunted. His facial expression is haunted because he's looking into the eyes of the descendant of his greatest enemy, Emperor Palpatine, the most powerful Sith to ever live. And he knows that he has a very dangerous task ahead of him, training Rey, knowing the potential dark side within her. If you like this video and you want to see more crazy fan theories, I upload videos like these all the time. So click subscribe so you get notified when I upload a new video. Also, if you haven't already seen the Darth Jar Jar video, it's definitely a must see. So I'd recommend watching that video after this one. And definitely keep the discussion going in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.